Joseph Kwame Chiruchi Dankwa was a Ghanaian politician, scholar, lawyer, and statesman. Dankwa was born on 18 December 1895 in the town of Bipon in Kou, in the eastern region of Ghana, then the Gold Coast. He is credited with giving Ghana its current name. Dankwa became a member of the Legislative Council in 1946 and actively pursued independent legislation for the Gold Coast. In 1947, he helped to found the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC, which later became the first political party in the then Gold Coast. In 1948, following a boycott of European imports and subsequent routing in Accra, Dankwa was one of the big six who were detained for a month by the colonial authorities. Dankwa's historical research led him to agree with Nkrumah's proposition that on independence, the Gold Coast be renamed Ghana after the Asian Ghana Empire in the Western Sudan. However, Dankwa and Nkrumah subsequently disagree over the direction of the independence movement and parted ways after two years. Nkrumah went on to form the Convention's Proposed Party, CPP, and eventually became the first president of Ghana. Dankwa stood as a presidential candidate against Nkrumah on April 1960, but lost the election. On 3rd October 1961, Dankwa was arrested under the Preventive Detention Act on the grounds of involvement with alleged plans to subvert the CPP government. He was released on 22nd June 1962. Dankwa was again arrested on 8th January 1964 for allegedly being implicated in a plot against the president, Nkrumah. He suffered a heart attack and died while in detention at the Insawam Medium Prison on 4 February 1965. Whilst in prison, J.B. Dankwa wrote several letters to petition Nkrumah for his release based on health grounds. In this video, we shall examine the last of such letters. Hi, my name is Nassim Kusema, a graduate of Ghana Christian International High School. I urge you all to subscribe to his blog TV. Thank you. Okay, so now let's read uh, the letter. J.B. Dankwa letter to Nkrumah 12 days before his demise in prison. His Excellency Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, President of the Republic of Ghana, Flagstaff House, Accra. Dear Nkrumah or dear Dr. Nkrumah, I am tired of being in prison on preventive detention with no opportunity to make an original or any contribution to the progress and development of the country. And I therefore uh, respectfully write to beg and appeal to you to make an order for my release and returned home. I am anxious to resume my contribution to the progress and development of Ghana in the field of Ghanaian literature, and that is tree and English, and in Ghana research, also history and culture. And I am anxious also to establish my wife and children in a home to develop the education of my children, 10 of them, and to restore my parental home at Chibi Yadom House to, re to a respectable uh, dignity, uh, worthy of my late father's own contribution to the progress of our country. You will recall that when in 1948 we were arrested by the British government and sent to the north for detention, they treated us as gentlemen, not as galley slaves, and provided each of us with a furnished uh, bungalow, two or three rooms, with a garden, together with opportunity for reading and writing. In fact, I took with me my typewriter and papers for that purpose. And Akwaje also did the same, and there was ample opportunity for correspondence. 
here at Insawam for the four months of my detention up to date, 8th of January to 9th May 1964. I have not been allowed access to my books and papers except the Bible. And although I was told in January that my application to write to my wife, Mrs. Elizabeth Dankwa, could be considered if I addressed a letter to the Minister of the Interior through the Director of Prisons, I have not for over three months since I wrote to the Minister as directed on the 31st January 1964, received any reply, not even a common acknowledgement from the Minister as to whether I should be allowed to write to my wife or not. As I had no opportunity to make any financial provisions for my wife and children at the time of my arrest, this delay in the minister's reply has made it impossible for me to contribute to the progress and maintenance of my wife and also for the education of my children, as is my duty to the nation. Secondly, you will recall that barely a month after our detention in the north in 1948, we were brought down to Accra and released to appear before a commission of inquiry set up to investigate the justice or otherwise of our arrest and a detention. We duly appeared before the Western Commission and made history for Gold Coast and Ghana. It is it resulted in the finding that the bank's constitution was outmoded at birth with a recommendation that our country should attain its independence within 10 years and that a constitutional uh, committee, the COSI committee, should be set up to lay down the foundation of such independence and the steps to be taken towards its attainment. In the present case, since I was arrested four months ago, I have not been asked to appear before any judge or committee or commission. And up to now, all I have been told is contained in a sheet of paper entitled Grounds for Detention, in which I am accused that in recent months, I have been actively engaged in a plan to overthrow the government of Ghana by unlawful means, and that I have planned to thereby and that I have planned thereby to endanger the security of the state. As no particulars of any kind were provided in the grounds for detention to indicate how the government of Ghana came to formulate such a disgraceful charge against me, I spent in the prison here, here the greater part of uh, January, February, uh, for 1964 to write a review of the whole of my activities in uh, recent months, uh, roughly from June 1962, as the last of course release from detention, to January 1964. This uh, writing was done by way, of, by way of representations in answer to the charge. I confidently assure you, sir, that when my representations reach you, it will be realized that my contribution in the said period of uh, recent months to the intellectual and cultural achievement of the country was such that what should have been sent to me on January 8, 1964 was not a hostile invasion of my home and family like an enemy territory together with my arrest and detention but rather a delegation of Ghanaian civil officials and other dignitaries to offer me the congratulations of the nation and the thanks of the government. This, however, was not to be, and I found myself locked up at Insawan Prison in a cell of about six by nine feet, without a writing or reading desk, without a dining table, without a bed or a chair or any form of seat, and compelled to eat my food squatting on the same floor where two are blankets and a cover are spread for me on, a, on the hard uh, cement to sleep on, and where a latrine pan without a closet and a water jug and a cup 
without a locker are all assembled in that narrow space for my use like a galley slave. I am required to sleep or keep lying down on the blankets and a small pillow for the whole 24 hours of the day and night except for a short period of about 5 minutes in the morning to empty and wash out my latrine pan and of about 10 to 15 minutes at noon to go for a bath. I am occasionally allowed to do a short exercise in the sun, say once a week for about half an hour. That is all I have been engaged on in four months with my talents, such as I possess, going waste, and my health being undermined and my life endangered by various diseases without being allowed to be taken to the prison hospital for continuous observation and treatment. I am now left in a prison cell at the special block at the Insawan prison reserved for dangerous uh, criminals and I am being thereby effectively uh, prevented from making any original contribution to the intellectual and cultural progress of our country. I end as I began. I am tired of being kept in prison, kicking my heels and doing a nothing worthwhile for the country of my birth and love and for the great continent of Africa, which was the first to give the entire world a real taste of civilization. I trust you, I trust you will accept this appeal for my release from detention in the spirit of utmost confidence, cordiality in which it is written. And I look forward to my early release from prison with the greatest possible faith expectation and confidence believe me to be yours sincerely and uh, respectfully jb so this is the letter um you can share your views uh, about the content of the letter in the comment section however um despite the plea of uh, jb dankwa uh, to be released by nkroma that did not happen. Uh, he was not released in prison. He died of health uh, complications of, uh, in prison. And, and, and this letter, uh, I mean, he died 12 days uh, after he wrote this letter. So I believe that, of course, when he was writing this letter, he had just 12 days to leave. And he died in prison. And that has been one of the darkest moment in the history of our country do not forget to, to uh, subscribe and share our link in the comment section comment anything you think about this content have a nice day